Hi there, Julie here, Head of Wine Education at Bright Cellars, and today I'm going to show you how to taste wine. Well, sure, it's easy enough to drink wine, but to really understand a wine, and how did that make you feel? You have to truly taste it. And here's how to do that. Okay, so for now it's gonna be a lot of talking on my end, but after we get through this initial description of how to taste wine, I promise you there will be lots of tasting. To fully assess a wine, we first need to make sure that we have the proper setup. So, First off, of course, I have my tasting glass here. Second, we are in a well-lit room. Third, coming here with a clean palette. And four, to make sure that we have no interfering odors around us. And now that we're all set, we are going to be doing three things. One is assessing the wine objectively. And doing that, we're going to be looking at the appearance, smelling it on the nose, and also tasting it on the palate. Next, we're going to interpret the wine subjectively, really considering the style, the quality, and what the intention of the winemaker may have been. And then third, we're going to simply enjoy it. But if you are tasting through a lot of wines and you will be driving, please be sure to spit. But before we get started, a quick summary on smell and taste. So the aromas that we detect in wines, those are detected through our olfactory receptors in the nose. And then taste itself involves the gustatory receptors on the palate. This is where we would detect things like bitter or sour or salty. Together, they form the wonderful experience that we call wine. First, we'll start with the appearance. Now, what we do first is kind of just look at the glass, give it a tilt, and really just make some initial assessments as far as is it clear or is it a little bit hazy and perhaps unfiltered? Is it still or is it sparkling? Do we see bubbles? And then uh, we can also look at the amount of legs we see, but they'll tell us a little bit about the wine. Now, when we're looking at the color and intensity, they are two separate things. Whites and reds, color hue wise, whites will kind of range from about lemon green all the way to like maybe golden and amber in general. And then reds tend to go from kind of purple and all the way to brown if they're super oxidized and uh, aged. But within those colors, there's also intensity levels. So depending on uh, how much we can see through the glass will kind of help us determine uh, what the intensity of that color hue is. But Whites are not always pale. Uh, great examples would be uh, Sautern, which is a very, very deep but golden color. Now we're moving on to the nose. So first things first, we're going to take the glass to our nose and without taking a very deep inhalation, um, just do some light little puppy sniffs. We're gonna see if there's any uh, faults we detect or any off odors, um, if there's, there's none in this one, so I think we're good to go. And then the first thing we're gonna kind of look at is the intensity. So this can range anywhere from low to pronounced. And what we wanna do is decide, okay, do I smell things and lots of aromas as soon as I pick up the glass? Or do I have to kind of inch a little bit close to it? Or do I have to just put my nose in the glass to get anything? So that'll help you decide that. And then once we're ready to kind of start listing the aromas, we have them categorized in three different ways. So one is the primary characters. These come from the grape itself. So this will be represented in things like different fruit notes, herbal notes, um, floral notes, things like that. And then next we have the secondaries. That comes from the winemaking process itself. So things like the uh, any yeast that was like uh, used in the process. So bread, toasted biscuit, things like that. And then next we have uh, like malolactic conversion, which can also give that kind of buttery, creamy note to it. And then we also have oak, so things like vanilla, baking spices, or even smoke. And then the last category we have is the tertiary category, and this is really for wines that have a little bit more maturity on them, whether it's through uh, further bottle aging or they were deliberately oxidized, like with sherry, for example. Now these notes are um, a little more developed fruit, so you'll have, instead of that fresh fruit you may have had with the younger wine, here you'll have more dried fruit, um, baked fruit, maybe even a little bit more like fruit preserves. And then you'll also start getting these other uh, tones to it, like leathery, gamey, a little more earthier, some nuttiness, things like that. So once you've smelled the wine, this can really tell you a lot about where it is in its development. So if you're really just smelling primary characters like lots of fruits and flowers, it's probably a very youthful wine. If you are starting to detect maybe just a little bit of tertiary, so maybe the fruit is, is a little bit dry or you're getting some nutty tones out of it, it might be developing. And then if you're getting lots of tertiary notes, so things like that leathery gaminess um, and all the fruit is very like baked fruit instead, um, then that's a very developed wine. And then of course, you also have wines that are just past their prime. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the palate. Now the first thing we want to detect is the sweetness of the wine. So this can range anywhere from dry all the way to lusciously sweet with many levels in between. That said, the majority of wines that you will come across are going to in fact be dry. 
Then next we consider the acidity of the wine. And this can be detected with the salivation in your mouth when you sip the wine. Um, this can range from low to high. And this can also tell you a lot about what grape variety we're looking at, uh, the region it grew in, the kind of climate that they have there, and also vineyard practices. Can it can tell you a little bit about that too. So then next we have for reds, tannins. This can range from low to high. And they can have different textures too. So you can have um, you know, really high tannins, but they're very velvety. Um, or you can have a little bit more moderate or medium tannins, but maybe they're a little bit grainier and sandier. So we always try to consider both when we're discussing tannins. And then next we have alcohol, um, which for wine, for still wines, it generally ranges from about 12 to 14 and percent. So that would be considered more medium alcohol. For fortified wines like ports and sherries, those are a little bit higher. And then also for sweet wines, those might be a little bit lower. And then next we have the body or mouthfeel, as we like to call it. And the easiest way for me to um, sort of signify what this is, is consider it the same way I would with milk. Uh, so the difference between a non-fat skim milk versus a 1% versus 2% versus uh, whole milk and then even half and half cream. Now once we get there, uh, we kind of go back to what we did on the nose. So very similarly, uh, the intensity. So what I said before, just how intense do you taste it? And also remember, intensity doesn't mean how many things you taste. It means how much do you taste of what you do taste. And then also we go on to the flavors, which be similar to what we did on the nose. It's going to be separated out between primary, secondary, and of course those special tertiaries. Um, and then last we do the finish. So there's three ways to look at the finish. Is it short? Does it kind of just fall off a cliff right after you sip it? Is it more medium? Does it stick around for a little bit longer? Or is it long and does it just evolve into other amazing flavors and take you on this wonderful journey? Now that we have looked at, smelled, and tasted the wine, we can come to our conclusion of the style and quality of the wine. So to do this, we consider the intensity, the complexity of the wine, the acidity, and also just the general balance of it. So is it, is it a wine that's okay, but maybe slightly off balance in some aspect? And that's probably just an acceptable wine. Is it a simple wine that has some intensity, but just in general is well balanced? That's a good wine. Is it a wine that has medium plus intensity and also conveys some complexity and has bright acidity to boot? Then we're talking a really good wine or a very good wine. Or is it just a total showstopper on all levels with a finish that just keeps on going and going and going? Well then, my friend, you have found a unicorn wine. Now, I know that all sounds like a mouthful, but I promise once you get into this rhythm, tasting wines and assessing them becomes like riding a bike. It'll just come naturally and it'll be hard to taste wine without thinking of these things.